today's installment of the 30-day deep trance identification challenge. My name is Jess and I'm so happy to be with you on this journey of mastering DTI. Now today we're going to be talking about something called perceptual positions. Perceptual positions is going to be the main mechanism that we're going to be using over the next few videos to associate into the model. There are many other ways in which you can associate into a model as well. However, especially for the beginners out there in DTI world, uh, this is going to be one of the easiest ways of doing it. And in this video, we're just going to discuss a little bit about what the different perceptual positions are. Because as you're sitting there watching the screen, looking at me, you're currently in first position. You're seeing through your own eyes. You're associated into yourself, looking back at me. Now, there are, four, there are four positions in total. So if you were to step outside of yourself, just imagine what it would be like if you were to step outside of yourself so you were kind of somewhere else in your room in, or in your space right now looking back at yourself, looking at the computer screen. I know this seems a little odd, but you can imagine that it's kind of like being a butterfly, just looking in watching that you, wherever that you is, watching the video. This is third position. Now, you can go ahead and step back into first, seeing through your own eyes. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, Jess, you went from, third po from first position to third position. What about second? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Because if you and I were in a room together, and you were looking at me, so you can imagine like the computer is gone and we're actually having a conversation face to face. You could start in first position, seeing through your own eyes, looking at me, listening to the words that I'm saying. And you could step outside of yourself into that third position, looking at the interaction between you and I. And then you could step into my shoes. So you could see through my eyes, looking back at you. This is second position, stepping into the shoes of somebody else. And of course you can look back at yourself over there. So if you were to step outside of me, back into third position, so you could see the interaction in our imagination game, and then back into first position, into yourself. So you have first position you, third position is dissociated, not in anybody's shoes. Second position is in somebody else's shoes. The last position is fourth position. And this is kind of the big picture. This is about the space in between you and everything else. So the space in between you and me, or the space in between you and your model. This is about the bigger universe. So if we were to go back to this imagination game where you and I are sitting in the same room, you start in first position, looking at me, and just imagine that you could step outside of yourself or drift outside of yourself, noticing the interaction between the two of us, so you're in third position, and then stepping into my shoes, into second position, knowing what it's like to be looking back at you. Now you could step outside of me and become pure consciousness and feel the space in between us, the flow of energy and the interaction. In fact, as pure consciousness, you could have a sense of how you fit in with the greater scheme of the universe, with reality itself existing as pure consciousness, being a part of a bigger whole. This is fourth position. And of course you could step back into third position, watching dissociated, watching the interaction between you and I, and then back into first position, back into you. So this is the basics of perceptual positions. And the reason why we use it in DTI along with it being easy is that 
It makes ecology very simple. This ensures that when you go through the DTI process, that you have a clear break in between you being you and you stepping into the role of the model. So that means that if there's anything that shouldn't come back with you from the model, then it can stay with the model. Think about Gilligan's work with Erickson. If he went through to third position, perhaps the experience that he had of uh, Erickson's rigid arm could have been left with Erickson. So in the next video, we're going to give you more of an experience of how you can use this with the model. However, for now, I'll just lay the foundation of how you will do this as a part of the deep trans identification. It always begins in first position, you being you with a model in whatever space you're in. Then you're going to step into third position. This makes it easy for you then to step into the shoes of the model into second position. Once the modeling experience is done, you'll step outside of the model back into third position, and this is key. You'll step back into third position because, as we said, this gives the unconscious mind a bit of a buffer so that anything that doesn't need to go back with you, anything that's less than resourceful, can stay with the model. This is the opportunity for you to clear the slate. And then back into first position. So you may find throughout the rest of today, maybe playing with jumping in different positions, maybe in different interactions that you're having. How curious could it be to step into somebody else's shoes, looking back at yourself? Or being a butterfly on the wall, watching the interaction between you and other people. Or even taking a moment to really feel what it's like to be consciousness in the space in between people as a part of the larger universe. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, where we'll continue with the experience of perceptual positions within deep trans identification. Have a fantastic day.